Uh, this truly is a great honor. I've had a lot of opportunities in my life. And by the way, uh, I know, Vicki told, told me I had between eight and 10 minutes. Um, and actually, uh, I'm gonna use 11. Uh, when I was first contacted, I was thrilled. And I want you all to know, I truly am honored. I'd like to uh, very much thank the board, and I'd like to very much thank the committee. Uh, when, when you receive things from people around the area from which you grow up, believe me, it actually means more than receiving things from a lot of other folks. I didn't know whether to try to be lighthearted or, or serious, so I just decided I would be myself because that's truly, truly who I am. I enjoyed my time in the Davis County system. And the reason I'm gonna use the 11 minutes is because I really want the students to pay attention. Mr. Saylor mentioned opportunity before, and that's truly what I wanna talk about to you all, is opportunity. In my elementary school, I was a good kid, but I gotta admit, the first time I got in trouble in school was in the first grade. I, uh, was getting ready to sit down and the young man pulled the chair from under me so my butt hit the floor and my head hit the back of the chair and the first thing I did is I jumped up and I actually started hitting the students on the head. I was the shortest kid in my first grade class, hard to believe, but I really was. Just as I started hitting him on the head, my teacher walked in the room and uh, she wasn't very happy about that. She talked with both of us. She punished both of us. Well, I actually made us hold books out like this. What was really interesting is about five years ago, I was attending something here at, at Davis County, and um, she sat by me. And I told, I told her about that. I related the story, and she actually put her hand up to her mouth and said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, no, don't you ever say that. I said, that was the best thing you could have ever done. I said, what you taught me was that retaliation is unacceptable, and it shouldn't be in school. And I said, besides, I'm an anesthesiologist. It didn't hurt me that bad. <laughs> I loved all my teachers in high school, or in, in elementary school, and, and, and I give honor to every teacher I had in elementary school. In junior high, at Davis County Junior High at that time, uh, the teachers also were just absolutely wonderful. They encouraged me to look beyond what I could see and to listen for more than just the air as it blows through the trees. And as a result, I ran for class president. I was class president in the seventh, eighth, and the ninth grade. I also had a teacher who uh, spoke to the class one day about loving and learning to love your family and your family members. What she talked about was the fact that she and her sister had, had fought like cats and dogs their whole lives. And now that they were getting a little older, they were getting closer and they were starting to love each other. But then there was a problem. Her older sister was diagnosed with cancer, and didn't have long to live. So the one thing she stressed to us was learn to love your parents and respect your parents, but also learn to love your brothers and love your sisters. And for you students, when the teachers tell you these things, don't, don't shake your head. You need to listen. What they're trying to do is, as Mr. Saylor pointed out earlier, is provide you with opportunities, opportunities to learn. I went on to high school and I still had some wonderful teachers. I loved my teachers. I didn't always love them, but I loved my teachers. They continued to encourage me, so I was actually class president in the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th grade. And I actually had forgotten about that until one of my, one of my kids pointed it out when they were looking at one of my books uh, one time. And um, I tell you these things not for you to look at me and see the things that I've done, but for the students to understand that the teachers are trying to help you. When I was in high school, I realized that the teachers actually cared about me, not only that I learn, but that I be a good student, a good person, and a good American. So for those of you who um, sometimes go to school and think, boy, I don't like this, understand that most of the negative feelings that you have about your teachers don't come from your teachers. It's coming from you and you need to adjust your attitude. Also in high school, was sort of, for me, it was one of those times when I started looking at um, 
all these little sayings or quotes. So I, I carried some quotes with me. And some people think those are kind of trite or stupid. Not for somebody who's struggling. And the first quote that I, that, uh, I carried with me was, you got to believe. And for those of you who um, watch baseball, it actually is one of the things that Tug McGraw said when he was the reliever in the seventh game of the World Series that they weren't even supposed to be in. And they won. I would say that every day. You got to believe. When you start where I started, you got to believe. You got to believe in yourself. The other thing I thought about was it's going to be a good day. High school is kind of one of those times when you're up and down all the time. Someone says something to you, you can be feeling great, and all of a sudden the world is gone. So I had to convince myself it's going to be a good day, no matter what people said and no matter what people did. You see, at that time, the ninth grade had come out to the high school, and there were about 1,400 students at Davis County High School. And, on, and at most, there were, there were less than 20 blacks in the school. So I had a lot of things that were said to me and a lot of things that were done. But you know what? It taught me a lot about assessing who was interested in my learning, who was interested in my being a success, and those who were going in the other directions. So, some of the little quotes and some of these little things, they're not harmful. You can use them to your advantage. Some would say that, well, you know, you, you accomplished all these things because you were privileged. Mm, let's take a look at this. I grew up in a log cabin that had three rooms, and one of those was a kitchen. We had an outhouse, we had a well, and we had a pot belly stove. I am the 14th out of 16, and we were all in that little place. So I guess I really am privileged. I have, I'm privileged because I had the opportunity and the honor to have the teaching that I got, the instruction that I got in the Davis County Public School System. I learned a good deal, and I experienced a great deal. And for those who don't know the difference between experiences and accomplishments, let me, let me enlighten you. Experiences are the things that we're taught. Those are the things that we see every day, the things that are done to us or done around us. Those are the good and the bad. They shape our attitudes. They shape our personality. For me, when I think of accomplishments, accomplishments come from within. Accomplish, accomplishments really are those things that um, that we learn, we internalize, and we live it. And because we live it, other people see it in us. And when we give that away, they are our accomplishments. You know, I, 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 said, I said 11 minutes, I'll, I'll make it. And, and with that, what I'm going to do is, um, you know, but accomplishments take hard work, accomplishments take patience, and accomplishments take Focus, focus every day. I'm gonna sort of finish with, with just a few things that I, I've carried with me um, for many, many years. The little sayings that have helped me get through a lot of things because, because you make out of it what you put into it. Number one, be, be yourself, believe in yourself. You know, a lot of people spend half their lives trying to figure out who they are or what they wanna do. And most of that's because they're so concerned about what everybody else thinks or is going to say to them. Guess what? You can't do anything about what people say or what people think of you. But you can shape that. You can shape that by how you respond, how you act, and how you react in critical situations. That's what people are going to remember about you, and that's what your accomplishments, going to, your accomplishments are going to be. I'm going to say this anyway because my kids told me not to, but one of my favorite sayings is, if you don't use your head, you may as well have a butt on both ends. <laughs> okay? Now, you laugh about that, but, but think about it for a minute. Nobody wants to be around somebody like that. No one wants to be around negative people. It's no fun. Why would you choose to do it? It gets you nowhere. Focus on what is right, and not necessarily on getting ahead. We always talk about getting ahead. 
Getting ahead implies getting over on someone or beating someone. Focusing on something, focusing on what is right, when you do that, you're already ahead. What you do is you elevate yourself and you elevate others along with you. And that's what God would have us do. So focus on what is right, not getting ahead. I encourage you to compete against others and compete hard. But remember, don't measure, your, don't measure your successes by what other people think. Measure your success by what it is that you want in life. There are many people who've made a lot of money, who live in big houses, drive big fancy cars. They hate it. Trust me. I see them every day. That's because they're doing things that they didn't want to do. They're doing what they thought they were supposed to do. So especially for you students, take this time of your life and try to decide what it is that you want in life. My three children, I told them each when they were about 12 or 13 years old, I said, start thinking about what you want to do in life because when you finish high school and when you finish college, you're not coming back here to live. <laughs> if you work hard enough to live under a bridge, you will live under a bridge. My son said it scared him to death, <laughs> you know? And so um, it really was pretty cool because all three of the kids would come back and say, Dad, I, I, I really remember that talk. <laughs> um, take luck in stride. Don't boast about it. Don't take credit for it. If something happens and you get lucky, because it's better to be lucky than good sometimes, just walk off. Because always remember, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. And what does he do with it? He eats it. <laughs> That's what he does. He doesn't show it off. He eats it. Um, and then finally, life is like a big old soup bowl. Okay? It has a lot of ingredients. And you'll always hear that you'll get out of life what you put in it. And partially, partially that is true. But it also depends on how you put your ingredients in. It's more than just how hard you work. A lot of it is how you work hard. And these little things will help you, especially you students, as you grow. Now, my wife's not here tonight, and I wish she was. But you see, my wife is a teacher, and she wanted to make sure that she was going to be ready for school tomorrow. But I just, I just want to thank you all for allowing me this opportunity to speak and uh, for allowing me to be honored by this award. Thank you.